Wisdom is Applied Sciences, so you know what time it is. It's time to talk about vegan diet meal structure and how to tell if you got a good vegan diet plan, a good plant-based diet plan. And the reason why I want to talk about this is because every once in a while, people will either ask me, hey, what do you eat? Or they'll show me the vegan diet plan that they're following. And they say, take a look at this and give me some feedback. What do you think about it? And quite often, be surprised at what I see. It just looks like a random list of foods put together, right? A half a cup of this and a cup of that and maybe some of this and a couple pancakes or whatever, right? Fairly random stuff. A lot of the times when people make up these diet plans, they don't tell you what the macro split is, how many calories it is or anything. There's no math, it seems like. It's just random. I should see certain things in your diet plan. There's certain things that should be very clear. Your diet plan is supposed to achieve several things. Number one, optimize training, optimize muscle growth, optimize for fat loss, optimize for gut health, both improving and maintaining gut health, and <clears throat> optimize for recovery and strengthening of your immune system, okay? You should be doing those things. So the spectrum ranges from a list of goals, such as improving overall human health and creating a physique transformation. It should range through those things, it should hit those points. And a lot of diet plans that I see, it doesn't really look very clear to me. Now, what I like to do typically is when I put together a diet plan, of course, I subscribe to the five categories of food, right? You got your fruits, you got your vegetables, you got your grains, legumes, nuts and seeds, right? And then of course, miscellaneously, you can add in mushrooms. But for the most part, I stick with those five categories. But even more so, I have two categories of food that show which one goes into what, right? Raw foods, cooked foods. I'm gonna start with cooked foods. <clears throat> The cooked foods are the foods that you'll break your teeth if you try to eat them raw, right? Legumes, grains, right? Ever try to just eat uncooked rice and just chew on it? It's terrible. One of the worst things you can do. It's a form of torture. Same thing, if you put some dry beans in your mouth and you just suck on them and chew them and try to eat them like that, you break your teeth, right? So of course, you have no choice. You gotta cook them, right? You should also cook them because that's how you maximize the amount of nutrients that you get from them. It's another reason to cook them, aside from not wanting to break your teeth, right? But when you have these things, when you put together these things, like, you know, the chickpeas, the red kidney beans, the black beans, the red lentils, green lentils, etc., you have those things, and then you combine them with your rice and your quinoa, right? Your sweet potato even, your buckwheat, your oatmeal, whatever the case is right? Those grains and starchy foods, all of that high carb stuff, that high energy foods, those high fiber foods, and you combine them with those high carb and high protein rich foods, you combine them together, you get a ton of fuel. And the purpose for that fuel is to optimize and appropriately fuel intense training, right? When it comes to macros, the two most important macros for muscle building is carbohydrates and protein, right? You need enough carbohydrates in your body in order to digest the protein. Because in order for your body to break down and absorb protein and actually shove it into the muscle, those amino acids into the muscle to repair those muscles, you need energy to do it, that energy comes from carbohydrates as well as fat. But out of all the energy that you burn throughout the day, carbohydrates is the overwhelming majority of it. It's the easiest to use, that glucose, right? Glucose gets stored into the body as glycogen, right? Whereas fat gets stored in your liver and you know, we don't wanna store fat. We love to store carbs because we can access that at any time, hit PRs in the gym, lift nice and heavy, <clears throat> get a good pump and all of that type of stuff. We need carbohydrates and protein for that, right? 
So that's why you want to have those high protein, high carb foods, such as those grains and legumes. And of course, you add that tofu, and tofu is great as well, and tempeh and seitan and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of wheat because the gluten, a lot of people have a gluten allergy, and gluten is like a glue. It's an adhesive, right? That's why gluten is so essential, typically, to baked goods because the gluten is what holds them together. It's a binding agent. But of course, you don't want that gluey binding agent stuck in your gut, right? Gums up your digestive tract. So I'm not a big fan of that. But the tofu, I don't have a problem with. 16 ounces of tofu comes out to about in between 36 and 40 grams of protein. That's a lot. And for a whopping 400 calories, it's a good trade. Not that high in calories, but tons of protein. That's awesome, right? So you throw that in there. Nice big meal of protein and carbs. Those are the cooked foods I'm talking about. Now, some people who are big fans of high fat diet, they say, well, no, why, don't, why not just keep your carbs low and keep your fat high? Well, it's because fat is not as easy to use for energy as carbs, right? And all kinds of studies show that carbohydrates is much better performance on high carbs and low. That's why marathon runners typically, they carb up. They don't increase fat loss, just eat a whole jar of peanut butter they eat pasta and bread and all that type of stuff, right? Because that energy is easy to access. Fuels your brain and all your muscles and all that type of stuff. The human body is not optimized to use fat in that way. Fat is good for improving the absorption and digestion of fat-soluble vitamins, like A, E, D, and K. Fat is good for regulating your cholesterol levels, right? Because the human body uses fat in order to create cholesterol, and that cholesterol is important to all types of stuff, right? Like insulating cells, right? Like optimizing and regulating hormones like testosterone, things of that nature. Cholesterol is very important. But you don't need to eat foods with cholesterol in them, and you don't need a whole lot of fat in your diet in order to effectively use fat. So typically, when it comes to your macros, all you really need is 10 to 15% coming from fat. If your carbs are nice and high, you're fine, right? But don't feel bad if your fat intake goes beyond that 15% upwards of 20, that's fine. But it doesn't really need to be any higher than 20, especially if you're trying to optimize for fat loss. So that's my deal on cooked foods and macros. Last thing I'll say about macros is when you're calculating your calories and macros, your calories and macros should be to fuel your lean body mass, not your overall body mass. Simplest way to illustrate this is, let's say you have one person who's 180 pounds and they're 8% body fat. You have another person who's 180 pounds and they're 26% body fat. The one who is 180 pounds and 8% body fat should be eating a lot more calories and intaking a lot more carbs and protein than the person who is 26% body fat and 180 pounds. Right? Same overall body weight, 180 pounds, but the body fat percentage is way different. You don't want to fuel your fat percentage, only your lean mass. You're trying to get rid of the fat mass. So if you're that 26%, you're trying to shrink that 26%. So why would you eat the calories to sustain it? If you're 8% body fat and 180 pounds, of course you're gonna eat more calories. You wanna sustain that 8%, right? Well, well the other, <laughs> you don't wanna sustain necessarily the 8%. You don't wanna get rid of all 8% either, right? But you need a lot more fuel. So that's the easiest way to illustrate that point. So let's say if your lean mass is 60 kilos, all you need is one gram per kilogram of lean mass or 1.2 or 1.4 or 1.6, something along those lines. And that number will range depending on how trained you are. Are you a newbie when it comes to this whole fitness thing? Or are you advanced? The more advanced you are, the more protein consumption you need. The more of a beginner you are, the least you need. Simple enough. Now moving on to the other foods, the uncooked foods, the raw foods. Those are gonna be 
your fruits, that's going to be your leafy greens, that's going to be your nuts and your seeds. Right? This stuff is meant to regulate your hormones and heal your gut, right? Improve and bolster your immune system. Reverse the aging process. That's the food that digs you out of depression and anxiety, elevates the serotonin levels in your brain, improves your sleep quality. Those are the healing foods, right? All those cooked foods, that's for the grind, that's for the rigorous training, that's for the muscle building, that's for the physique transformation. Those raw foods, all the enzymes and the antioxidants and the probiotics and the prebiotics from those foods, that's the healing stuff. See, because in this chaotic world that we live in, we're getting stressed from all sides. We're getting stressed from our training, stressed from our job, stressed from the news, stressed from all kinds of stuff, stressed from your bills. You're getting stressed from the air that you breathe and the chemicals everywhere and stuff that you inhale. Stress from everywhere. And that stress oxidizes your cells, breaks you down and ages you. Those raw foods stop that dead in its tracks. Those raw foods, they reverse things like Crohn's and colitis and diverticulitis and IBS, right? And mental and emotional health issues, right? Bad gut bacteria, that, those raw foods minimalize and balance your good gut bacteria. Minimalizes bad gut bacteria, improves good gut bacteria, right? The prebiotics feed the probiotics, which is the good gut stuff, the good gut bacteria. So when I look at your diet plan, yeah, I should see those cooked foods on there, but I should also see those raw foods. I should see that mango, that grapefruit, those kiwis, those berries, raspberries, blueberries, blackberries, elderberry, I should see that stuff. I should see the cucumber. I should see the squash, the zucchini. I should see that stuff. I should see the spinach and the asparagus and all of that type of stuff. The kale, I should see that stuff. Now there are some greens that you gotta steam a little bit at least. Kale is kind of tough. Steam it. Broccoli, tough. Steam it. Eating that stuff raw is a little difficult, but steam it. All you need to do is soften it up a little bit, right? Leeks, steam them. The reason why you don't cook these foods is because if you cook them too much, you kill all the enzymes and the, and the antioxidants and the probiotics and the prebiotics that's in them. You want to preserve that stuff because your body uses that stuff to heal. That's medicine. So that's the purpose of the raw foods. Those raw foods are essential, right? Because those raw foods also hydrate your body. The overwhelming majority of your body is water, much like the earth. We're talking over 70%. So rather than walking around with a gallon of water to make up for a diet that's dehydrating because of all of the, the sodium and the chemicals and whatnot, and all these dry cooked foods, why not just walk around with maybe just 16 ounces of water with some squeezed key lime and some cucumber? And you don't have to drink the whole gallon of water because your diet, all those raw foods are hydrating. It's just a smart way to do it. Those raw foods, that's, those were all the good healing fiber, insoluble fiber, soluble fiber comes from. All that water, you do that, you'll, you'll optimize your blood flow, improve your eyesight, clear up your skin, all types of stuff, right? That's what that raw food does. When I say body transformation diet, I don't just mean changing your body composition and building muscle and strength. I mean completely transforming and drastically improving your health overall. That's what your diet should do.